So greetings again, my brothers and sisters. As always, it is a pleasure to be in the house of the Lord. Um, we come here week after week to encourage and to uplift one another, to remind ourselves of our place in this world and our place in the kingdom of God. And, you know, I can say in the kingdom of God because the Spirit of God dwells amongst us and we can feel as though we're there already um, in that kingdom because Jesus reigns over us. And so when we, when we come here, we, we learn from time to time different messages, reminders of how we should live in this world, conduct ourselves. And today I want to speak on our conversation. And <clears throat> as we look into this word, our conversation, we're going to find that it is not speaking only of the things we say, and, but also we, we're going to realize that the things we say can affect our personal lives um, for many years thereafter. And so it is talking also about our life, our conduct, uh, how we behave ourselves. Uh, so <clears throat> words do carry a lot of weight and um, they, they can be very powerful. Our conversation, and the thing we have to ask ourselves, what is acceptable before God? What kind of a conversation is acceptable before God? What kind of a lifestyle is acceptable before God? acceptable before God. Ephesians 4.29 we pick this verse, although Paul is talking about different things here. He says, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Incredible, because you, you think Paul might be talking to strangers here, people who don't know the way of the Lord. But no, he is, he's talking to converts. And even if there were strangers there, they will learn something new, right? Something different. But these, these Ephesian brethren, they have already, they, they accepted Christ. They were baptized into Christ. But as we know, sometimes there are lingering things in that new life. And so Paul is encouraging the, the brethren to let go of the past. Let go of the things that kept you back from Christ. And change your ways. Because, you know, the Spirit of God can be grieved uh, if we continue in a, in, a, in a path that is not good. Um, we may start off very well and the Spirit of God is happy to dwell with us, but then um, we can become very um, relaxed and not motivated at all in, in any way and look into for motivation or for someone to motivate us and feeling to realize that Sometimes we have to do that to ourselves and motivate others. Uh, so the verse is saying we should not allow these things to come into our conversation, into our life. Corrupt com com communication. Uh, communication. We know what that means. Um, but he's encouraging the brethren to um, speak words and things that would edify encourage, uplift, you know, not to bring us down in the gutter, uh, but to help us to uh, know how to speak and how to conduct ourselves. And it's things that we want for our children, you know, to be respectful so others will respect you. <coughs> um, we don't want to grieve the Spirit of God. That's the, the, the Spirit of God, if it is grief, it will, it will not be with us. And that's, that's a very sad place to be. Um, 
1 Peter 1 and verse 15. 1 Peter 1, 15. And he's talking about holiness here. And, you know, just, just, you know, how the child of God and children of God should show, show a pattern of holiness. Verse 15, he says, But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, as he, our God called us. He is holy. He is holy. He is perfect in his ways. Our Lord Jesus Christ was perfect in his ways as well. Right? In all manner of his life, he was. There was no fault in him. So Peter again is encouraging the brethren to live a holy life, a godly life, right? A life that is separated from this world, not to be like, right? So um, this, is, this is how children of God are reminded to conduct themselves, or we should conduct ourselves in this world. We should always show a pattern of godliness, a pattern of holiness, not trying to be and try to fit in uh, as the rest of the world. Here is a wonderful promise in Psalms 50 and verse 23 uh, to those that would show holiness, that would live a holy life, a godly life. Uh, 50 verse 23 Whoso offereth praise glorifieth me, and to him that ordereth his conversation aright will I show the salvation of God. Proverbs 15, verse 1. Proverbs 15, verse 1. As soft as it turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. The tongue of the wise useth knowledge of right. And verse 3 or verse 4. Uh, a wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. So let's remember words do influence others. A soft answer. Turneth away wrath. Can you imagine just trying to be angry and, and be loud, speaking to a person that, is, that will respond very soft and very calm and not be, um, show any sign of anger. It is hard to continue um, any form of um, argument or, you know, or anger. It is hard to display it because the person is not feeding into it. And so, that's the, for us, that is what we need to um, develop. If, if we don't have it, then we need to develop these. Soft answers do turn away wrath. And we, sh we should remember that. The tongue of the wise uses knowledge of right. So, don't blame anyone for saying something you should not say, you know, um, you know, we need to control anger, every one of us, all God's people, because the Spirit of God helps us to do these things, right, because we use knowledge just proper, the right way, sometimes we can lose our temper, and um, sometimes when, when a person loses their temper, um, Things just spill out of their mouth. And it's hard to take it back. You cannot take it back. Once it's gone, it's gone. And you hope that person will forgive you or not process it the way um, that you release these horrible things sometimes. So always remember in, 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 in situations that, and it's good for me, it's good for you, and if this world will only look at some of the instructions from the Word of God, we can solve a lot of problems. And um, we hope that for the world, but in God's church, it's not uncommon to have situations and to have problems. 
and we have, we have to use discretion. We have to use wisdom, right? A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. You know, there's, there's so much fruit, so much we can offer, so much we can gain. Um, but perverseness, arrogancy, um, uh, it's a breach in the spirit. It's, it is, it's all, there's just this gap, this, this opening, this, you know, it, it, it does not really hold knowledge the way it should, you know. So, um, it, it cannot be tamed, it cannot be controlled. Let us look at Psalms 52. Psalms 52, verse 4 and 5. Psalms 52, verse 4 and 5, it says, Thou lovest, um, 52 of Psalms, Thou lovest all the word words, O thou deceitful tongue. God shall likewise destroy thee forever. He shall take thee away and pluck thee out of thy dwelling place and root thee out of the land of the living. I want to follow that with Matthew 12 and verse 34. So these are things that will happen to deceitful tongue. Um, you know, it, it is a deceitful life. It will not last forever. Uh, 12.34 O generation of vipers, um, how can ye being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. So, again, you know, we, we spill things out. Things spills out of our mouth and, you know, it, it is, sometimes we wonder, well, how did I say that? How did that come out of my mouth? But, you know, um, you treasure these things inside for so long, um, whether it's, if it's good, things you treasure in your heart, good response will proceed out of the mouth. If there is evil, if there is hypocrisy, um, see what Jesus is saying here, right? How can you speak good things? The heart can only release that which is, it, is processed that which it contains. So, as children of God, we need to supplant, we need to replace, we need to root out these things that are in us, whether it's, if it's evil, if it's, whether it's gossiping or envy or, you know, jealousy. We need to replace them with things that are uplifting and and strengthen and encouraging um, to one another. And you know, we're not generation of fighters. We're not. We are uh, the generation of, of, of people that God places his spirit on and, and we hope to pass that knowledge and wisdom to our children and prayerfully our children will pass it on to their children. Um, that's the people we ought to be. And that's what we encourage here. You know, so our lives, our conversation should reflect holiness, should reflect the Spirit of God in us. We should be able to keep our tongue and control um, the way we speak, right? And so don't be so angry that you have to regret, right? Um, there, there, there's coming a time, and we see that all the time. The, some people, their whole life is about swearing, right? Even when they're in a bad situation, instead of looking to God and, and calling upon God, they swear. In the last days, in these plagues, people will curse God. They will not look for help. They will curse God. Because that's, that's what they know. For us, um, we call on God when we're in a terrible situation. We're not, not going to swear. That's not a first thing that's going to come from our mouth. Right? And if it, if it does, if it happens, I want you to think about it. Don't let it happen again. Rather, you know, bite your tongue at least. Just, just, just come to one. Just say Mississippi 1, Mississippi 2, Mississippi 3, before you say anything, right? Is that what I say you should do? Right? I'll come from one to ten. Just 
just calm yourself down, right? Um, before uttering things we might regret. Before, you know, using language that we're not used to using. We use it, it is used because it is used right around us. And we think that that's a way to get out of situation. But no, sometimes it creates more problem. So, I just want you to think about these. Um, James 2. James 2. James 2. Uh, sorry, James chapter 3 is what I want to quote to you. James 3, verse 2. I want to read these verses. I wanted to pick a couple of verses from this. Um, from this. But I thought, wow, this is too good. So let me read through it. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and is able also to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth uh, that they may obey us, and we turn about the whole body. Behold also the ships which though they be so large and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a little small helm, whether soever the governor listeneth. Even so the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity, so is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and set it on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beast, now birds and, and serpents, and of things in the sea is tamed, and hath give, been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Therewith we bless God, even the Father. And therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. That a fountain sent forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either of a vine fig, or can, uh, so can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh? Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if we have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descended not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is pure, is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality, without hypocrisy, and the fruit of righteousness is sown in the in peace of them that make peace. Isn't this was just wonderful and uplifting, right? It it is correcting, it is it is showing us a path that we should go. <clears throat> Right? Um, it is just how we should control ourselves, how we should control our tongue when we speak, because it can affect our, not just ourselves, but sometimes things that we say that proceed from our mouth um, can affect our family. It can affect relationships in our workplaces. It can affect relationship in the church. It can affect the service in the church. It can affect the relationship we have with God. It's incredible, you know, that what takes place, um, sometimes just one situation, one person, right? Like Achan's sin, all of 
Israel suffering. And so the encouragement for each and every one of us is to be very careful what we say and how we say. It does not mean that we do not have the authority and the power to, um, to fix a thing and to judge a matter. But there are certain things that we should not get involved in. If, it, if there's a situation, uh, we should not be putting fuel on it. Right? We should find a way to put out the fire, not to make the fire bigger. Okay, as children of God, that's what we do. That's what we know. So we know, you know, we just always look for peace. So if I'm going in the wrong path, if you think I'm saying something that I should not be saying, and you, the person listening to it, you say, hey, but I can you know, you know, just maybe, you know, maybe why don't we take this, look at it this way. And, you know, so that's what we're supposed to be doing as children of God, because the, the tongue, it's a little member, and James is saying, it is very unruly. All right, it can, it, it, it's set a wall on fire. We had many wars take place, and it's just, just a word, you know. The president or the prime minister can say, you know, start a battle, put that battle in the ring right now. And then, before you know it, guns and bombs start going. Um, so, words can do a lot for us, and we have to be very mindful of that and careful how we speak, and we, we are charged with the responsibility to preach the truth. Um, there are many people who mix the truth with lies. Again, how words can affect, you know, from the changing of the Sabbath. Uh, it is preached that this is how it should be, and we look at the Word of God and say, well, no, the Sabbath remains the seventh day of the week as the Word of God teaches us in the scripture when God created all things. So, you know, we have um, propaganda, we have so many lies today. In a couple of days it will be what they will call Christmas, the day of Christ's birth. And it is taught um, in schools and in public places uh, to our children. And, you know, they're again affecting millions, um, thinking that this is, this is the way it should be. And we say, well, no, uh, we're going to stand on the truth. We're going to say the way the Word of God presents it, right? So we have a responsibility to always speak the truth, but we have to um, live it as well. It is, it is very important, as Paul said, our lives should be like an epistle read and known of all men. So, you know, people talking to you should listen to your conversation and realize that, you know, it's not like this world. Um, like Peter, when in Jesus, before his crucifixion, the people said, you speak like one of his disciples. They were able to recognize Peter as one of Jesus' followers just by the way he spoke. And that's how it should be for us. I want to take two more scriptures with you, um, to you. Um, Matthew 12, 36. Matthew 12 and verse 36. But I say unto you that every idle word that, a, that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. 37. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. And I put here, um, just imagine, think about it. If our conversation should be played back to us, Right? Jesus comes and he plays our conversation back to us. Would we be happy to listen to it? You know, would, would, you be, would we be happy to hear our conversation? So let's, let's assume that this conversation is after our, we come to Christ because our past is erased and so now everything about us is written in heaven. Our names are written in heaven and our conversation is in heaven. If it is played back to us, how will we feel? Jesus is saying, by our words we'll be justified. So there is a playback here. 
by our words will be condemned. There is a recording of our life. Just imagine standing in the courts, denying the evidence, and then it is played and say, Is that your voice? Yeah. Well, is this what you this your conversation? Will you be happy about it? And that's one of the questions I ask myself. Um, am, I going to, am I going to be happy to hear conversation that I carry on with my friends? Or will, I, will it be so disgusting that I won't want to hear? And then Jesus will say, well, your own conversation condemns you. Or will I be very happy and say, boy, boy, I'm so happy that, you know, I can listen to my conversation. You know, it's like listening to that song of Jerusalem. It feels so good listening to singing with the girls. I know um, it's it's such a, it's, it feels so good. And uh, you can play that back. If, if that is played back to me when Christ comes and say, Yes! Be so happy, right? Um, but just imagine if our conversation is played back to, to us. And I want you to keep that in mind. Go forward. Because God is willing to forgive us and to not remember our sins from today. Forward. He don't want to remember anything. So he's willing to erase that everything about us. And now this, this message is heard. Order your conversation for right. We should all do that. Control our conversation. Don't let temper, don't, don't let anger just, you know, to blood, blood of words that we would regret, right? Speaking before we think, and then think after our action. Um, that won't be good. So think about that. The playing back of our conversation. Are you, will you be happy with it? And I'm going to take the last verse with you. And what we, you need to do, what we all need to do um, going forward, if we think that we have a problem in this area, uh, Psalms 19, verse 14. Psalms 19, verse 14. <clears throat> Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. The meditation of the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart. All right, so when you lie in bed, you cannot sleep. Meditate. Think about God. Good things should proceed, should come out of you. Um, wake one o'clock in the night. Um, just, just spiritual things. You should be meditating on spiritual things. Pray about this. Pray to God as David is saying here. As God, that, you know, he supplant, he remove all the, and he raise all the evil things, all the, the stuff that comes to us when we relax and that we hate to think about. Right? Um, 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 plant good seed, good thoughts. So we can meditate on good things. The, the words of my mouth um, and the meditation of my heart be acceptable. When we pray to God, we want our prayer to be accepted by God. When we sit and we meditate, when we speak and when we preach the word of God, we want these things to be accepted by God and the congregation of the saints. God bless you, my brethren. Amen. Amen.